from Beowulf, translated by Burton Rockbell. Retrieved from Pearson Common Core Literature, the British Tradition, Volume 1, Copyright 2015, Pearson Education Incorporated, or Affiliates. All Images, Retrieved from Google Images, 2022. Page 40, The Wrath of Grendel. A powerful monster living down in the darkness, growled in pain. Impatient as day after day the music rang, loud in the hall, the harp's rejoicing call, and the poet's clear songs, song of the ancient beginnings of us all. Recalling the Almighty making the earth, shaping these beautiful plains marked off by ocean, then proudly settling the sun and moon to glow across the land and light it. The corners of the earth were made lovely with trees and leaves, made quick with life with each of the nations who now move on its face. And then as now warriors sang of their pleasure, so Hrothgar's men lived happily in his hall till the monster stirred, that demon, that giant, Grundle, who haunted the moors, the wild marshes, and made his home in a hell not hell but earth. He was spawned in that song, convinced by a pair of those monsters born of Cain, murderous creatures banished by God, punished forever for the crime of Abel's death. The Almighty drove those demons out, and their exile was bitter, shut away from men. They split into a thousand forms of evil, spirits and fins, goblins, monsters, giants, a brood forever opposing the Lord's will and again and again defeated. Then, when darkness had dropped, Grendel went up to the Herod, wondering what the warriors would do in that hall when their drinking was done. He found them sprawled in sleep, suspecting nothing. Their dreams undisturbed. The monster's thoughts were as quick as his greed or his claws. He slipped through the door, and there in the silence snatched up thirty men, smashed them, unknowing in their beds, and ran out with their bodies, the blood dripping behind him, back to his lair, delighted with the night slaughter. At daybreak, with the sun's first light, they saw how well he had worked, and in that gray morning broke their long feast with tears and laments for the dead. Rockstar, their lord, sat joyless, inherit a mighty prince mourning, the fate of his lost friends and companions, knowing by its tracks that some demon had torn his followers apart, he wept, fearing the beginning might not be the end. And that night, Grendel came again, so set on murder that no crime could never be enough, no savage assault quench his lust for evil. Then when then each warrior tried to escape him, search for rest in different beds, as far from Herod as they could find, seeing how Grendel haunted when they slept. Distance was safety. The only survivors were those who fled him. Hate had triumphant, so Grendel ruled, fought with his righteous, one against many, and won. So Herod stood empty and stayed deserted for years. Twelve winters of grief from Rothgar, king of the Danes, sorrow heaped at his door. By hell forged hands, by hell forged hands, his misery leaped. The seas was told and sung in all men's ears. How Grendel's hatred began, how the monster relished his savage war on the Danes, keeping the bloody feud alive, seeking no peace offering, no truce accepting no settlement, no price in gold or land, and paying the living for one crime only with another. No one waited for a reparation from the plundering claws. That shadow of death haunted in the darkness, stalked Rothgar's warriors, old and young, lying and waiting, hidden in mist, invisibly following them from the edge of the marsh, always there, unseen, so mankind's enemy continued his crime, killing as often as he could, coming alone, bloodthirsty and horrible.
though he lived in Herod. When the night hit him, he never dared to touch King Rothgar's glorious throne, protected by God, God, whose love Grendel could not know. But Rothgar's heart was bent. The best and most noble of his council debated remedies, sat in secret sessions, talking of terror and wondering what the bravest of warriors could do. And sometimes they sacrificed to the old stone gods, made heathen vows, hoping for hell's support. The devil's guidance in driving their affliction off. That was their way, and the heathen's only hope. Hell always in their hearts, knowing neither God nor his passing, as he walks through our world, the Lord of heaven and earth. Their ears could not hear his praise nor his glory. Let them beware. Those who are thrust into danger, clutched at by trouble, yet can carry no solace in their hearts, cannot hope to be better. Hell to those who will rise to God, drop off their dead bodies, and seek our Father's peace.